Please pray with me. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and our lips to speak it true. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I was in a church once where the rector asked people to bring their checkbooks to forum with them the next Sunday. He told us he wasn't going to ask for money. Instead, he told us he was going to help us discover our priorities in life. So we brought our checkbooks. This was back when people still used checkbooks. And when we still wrote checks for most things. He had us categorize every check for the past month. The categories were things like food and housing, eating out, movies, Drinking, sports, coffee, childcare, exercise, gifts, cable television, computer things, gas, insurance, medical, dental, software, smoking, books, our church donations, and other charitable giving. You get the idea. Then he had us eliminate housing and food costs and non-discretionary items crucial to life, like medical and dental costs child care and the like. He wanted us to see what we had used our truly discretionary spending on. There was no hidden point to this, no push to give more to the church, give more of what we'd been given back to God. Instead, the goal was for each person to discover what their priorities were in life. For some, it was exercise or vacation or their family. Others had prioritized a hobby or entertaining or just eating out. I wonder if each of us were to do this exercise, what would we discover about our priorities? I know. Some of us do not have enough money for discretionary spending. For some of us, all our money goes to necessities. You are in this category Imagine what you would spend money on first, if you had money to spend. The first lesson today has this same kind of exercise. Well, it has a shorter version of the discovering our priorities from our spending exercise. God came to the newly crowned King Solomon in a dream and said, Ask what I should give you. Now there's an invitation to take a priority inventory. God told you today to ask him for something, anything. What would you ask him for? Well, one thing, hmm, what one thing would you ask of genie God? Long life, serenity, health, wealth, power, happiness, what? A perfect bowling game or a hole in one. Something a family member needs. I know, three more wishes, right? Uh, or maybe you would be altruistic and not ask for yourself. What about world peace? Universal health care, an end to hunger for everyone to recognize and respect the dignity of every human being. Two kinds of asks on my list of examples. Things we ask for ourselves or for those we love and things we ask for others outside our tribe. We humans seem to be programmed to look after our own self-interest first and then for those most like us. After us and ours, after me and mine, the scarcity model kicks in where we fear what we want is in limited supply. So we work to keep whatever supply there is in the family, so to speak. God teaches us that everyone is in our group, is in our family. Following the example and the instruction of Christ Jesus, we recognize and begin to see that everyone indeed is in our group, in our tribe, in our family. We learn to respect the dignity of every human being. We learn to love our neighbor as ourselves, as we love God and God loves us. 
This is what King Solomon did by asking for an understanding mind. Actually, I'm told the Hebrew literally says a listening heart. This is the root of discernment, to know the difference between good and evil, to know what God wants versus what masquerades is God's will. Solomon said he was asking for a listening heart so he could rule his people wisely. Our lesson says this pleased God, and God therefore granted Solomon's request. Notice God hadn't promised to grant Solomon's request. Instead, he heard Solomon out, heard his request, and granted it because the request pleased God. The lesson suggests that God might not have granted Solomon's request had he asked for something for himself. The usual things, apparently being long life, or riches, or even death to my enemies. Did you notice all this happened in a dream? Solomon had been deciding in the inmost core of his being what kind of king he would be. He was already wise having beaten out his half-brother for the throne. Solomon had already solidified his power and even married an Egyptian princess so that her father, the Pharaoh, wouldn't invade. Solomon called himself a mere child in our lesson, but that mere child had a wife, a pagan wife at that. This same chapter of 1 Kings says Solomon loved God, though, and was building himself and his wife a home first, I would guess, as well as building God's temple next, I would guess, and a wall around Jerusalem. Solomon worshipped God in Gibeon, a high place, a place where the people worshipped while there was no temple. High places are where pagan worship occurred, and Solomon was there with his pagan wife. If this were a movie, you would hear doom, doo, doo, doo sounds right now. Mm. All this makes me wonder whether Solomon was deciding in his innermost self whether he would use his new powers of his kingship for himself or for others. If so, Scripture makes clear Solomon chose to live for others. And God gave Solomon both what he asked for, a discerning heart, and what he had not discerning heart as well as riches and honor all his life. And if Solomon were faithful to God, long life as well. Solomon's experience is a cautionary tale. What we learn is when God invites you to ask him for something, choose wisely. Hasn't God told us to ask? Ask and it shall be given you, Jesus said. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. We all must take Solomon's choice. What do you ask of God? How do you use what God has given you? Do you, re you reserve what you've been given only for you and yours or for others? I ask in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.